All right, uh, Jason Fitz, he joins us now. Sorry about this. Uh, he joins us now. State of sports. Are we going to get baseball? Are we not going to get baseball? Who should I believe? Jason Fitz, I'll make you the authority on this right now. Uh, do we feel like there's going to be baseball all of a sudden? I mean, it seems to change by the five seconds here. Yeah, I, no, I, I just I have a hard time buying into it, you know, and, and you're right. I feel like every two seconds we hear something different. But, you know, to me, the two things that stand out really is just the incompetence of Rob Manfred, uh, which is just a continual thing that, you know, I, I've said it's not about what happened when he talked to Greeny on Monday night. I mean, that's sure that's part of it. You know, every commissioner speaks. But whereas you hear Adam Silver saying, hey, we're going to respect players and whatever their their wishes are, and you, you hear the, the tone of Adam Silver's conversation, and then Rob Manfred uses it basically as an entire time to run a commercial for why the players are in the wrong and why the players are going to screw over the owners. I mean, I just watched all of that go down and thought, man, a commissioner at his very core is supposed to be creating some sort of a culture where everybody wants to work together. We're in this situation because Rob Manfred's been bad at his job for so many years that there's no trust from one side to the other. And that should be squarely at his feet. So the fact that that hasn't been built, you know, to me, what we're watching is just a really, really ugly custody battle in a divorce. And <laughs> you're going to have some days where it feels good. And some days where it feels like, man, we're going to get this worked out. And then the next day you think, Nope, She's never seeing my kid again. So, like, it just it, it feels like that's what we're watching in front of us. So, until we see it, I'm going to believe that it's going to stay contentious. Well, the MLBPA just tweeted one minute ago that reports of an agreement are false. Uh, so, we are hearing so much back and forth. But do you take any solace, Jason Fitz, in the fact that they have a face-to-face – what a concept, a face-to-face meeting. Do you feel like at least there's grown-ups together in a room – uh, forget this Zoom stuff, forget emailing, forget text messaging, face-to-face. Does that at least make us feel better, whether the reports of agreements right now are true or false, that at least being in the room should get us there? Yeah, I mean, and and then you have this stunning moment where you're thinking, really? Really, guys? We weren't able to get this done? Like, it, it took this for you guys to actually sit down and talk like human beings? I mean, that, it, it's crazy to me. And look, I mean, uh, not to, to liken it to my own personal experience, but, you know, like I, I went through this thing buying a house in Connecticut. and You know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out all of these details. And my real estate agent and their real estate agent are yelling at each other. So I finally just called the person that was selling the house and said, hey, meet me for coffee and let's get this figured out. And what do you know? Ten minutes later, house is done and it's all taken care of. And sometimes you know, just you got to be an adult if you've ever been through a negotiation before, and all of these people have. You've got to be an adult and come in and say, okay, let's just start talking through each other and sit down in a room across from each other because it's a heck of a lot easier to, to text somebody, I hate you, go to hell, I'm never going to work with you again, than it is to say that somebody, you know, face-to-face, eyeballs to eyeballs. What about the health side of things? I mean, COVID-19 is going up in certain areas of the country. Are we just totally forgetting that side? I mean, obviously this is step one, but I feel as if it's possible we might not even get to see baseball because the coronavirus, not so much the the negotiations. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I don't know how we've managed to just forget about COVID-19. Like, it's not a part of this conversation. Like, it just, it makes no sense to me. And it was jarring, you know, when you look back at the health and safety protocols they were talking about for Major League Baseball, some of them were laughable. Like, suddenly you can't throw the ball around between uh, batters. Like, I just can't imagine that. But even to the NBA's point, the fact that we see this long document of what's going to be asked of NBA players while they're in the bubble in Orlando, and it's like, well, you can play cards, but you can't play with each other's cards. And you can play ping pong, but we don't want you playing in teams because you can't be right next to somebody. It's like, so I can't play ping pong in, in doubles because you don't want me in that proximity. <laughs> but then you're going to let me sweat all over somebody in the paint? Like, I, I don't understand it at all. So, yeah, I, I think we're really underselling how difficult the COVID-19 aspect of this could be and what will happen if there's, God forbid, another outbreak or an outbreak that affects a bunch of players. Yeah, Jason Fitz, he's the host of First Take, Your Take on ESPN Radio. And, of course, uh, the NBA, you know, Friday it looked like it was going one direction. Now it seems like it's swung back. And I guess uh, at this point, do we feel that the NBA, you know, led by Adam Silver, has kind of uh, gotten through a little rough patch maybe and figured some things out? Do we feel confident that we will see hoops still? Yeah, I feel pretty confident. I mean, barring COVID-19. Uh, But when it comes to everything else, like I I think the NBA has made it pretty clear and they're going to take the stance of if you're not comfortable playing, 
that's cool. We're just not, we're going to respect it and we're going to move on. And I think by taking that stance as, as strange as that is uh, for some people to wrap their heads around, I think they've, they've really made it clear. And then look, the players coalition comes out and says, there are certain things that we think are important and we're not going to come back without them. Well, that's, uh, that's the players using their voice collectively back to the league to try and affect change. I, I don't have any problem with that. And if there's any indication of what the NBA is going to do, I think they'll figure that out. So really the, the players are going to manage to get more platforms of the social conversations they want to have. The NBA is going to find a way to get some games. And I honestly believe it's going to happen. And the numbers are going to be through the dang roof because everybody's going to want to watch finally NBA stars playing in a playoff that we, it's easy to forget. This was setting up to be a hell of a playoff anyway. Now everybody's healthy. Everybody's got a chance. Come on now. You're starting to see some things with the NBA break with how they're going to kind of figure out everything. And I thought the most intriguing thing was the hotline, the hotline for breaking the rules. What are your thoughts on uh, on that concept? Yeah, I mean, the concept of a hotline for rule break, right no. I yeah. mean, uh, the, the, the amount of things that they're putting into these safety constrictions that feel like all of a sudden we're back in, you know, high school. It feels like summer camp, right? Like, you know, we're going to ask you to tell your counselors if you see anything. And, like, I, I just – I'm not buying into any of that. Like there's going to be a, it's going to be difficult because you think we've societally gotten restless over the last few months. Imagine being an NBA player that's now stuck in a hotel with just the other NBA players you see every day that, I mean, that's going to be difficult to police. So, uh, you know, important to police because an outbreak will shut everything down. So this is where I think some of your veteran teams and some of your teams with older players are just going to be better situated to, to handle this because they know what's at stake, and they understand that their limitations a little better than I think younger teams do. All right, uh, now we go to football, and Zeke Elliott, several Cowboys, Texans, uh, University of Houston. I think uh, there was a WVU player. I mean, are we starting to feel less confident that football can withstand this? Every other sport's been affected by it. They're the only one, really. I mean, yes, they lost some mini camps, but are we starting to feel that, yes, even the mighty NFL may run into some problems? Yeah, I think they are going to. And, and the most stunning part is that we haven't heard anything about what plan B is. So where fans, you know, we keep talking about the way fans are going to react to baseball. How are fans going to react if, if the NFL, which is the sport that's had the longest to figure out what the heck they're going to do, comes out and they're shook by this and don't have a plan B. And, and maybe they have a plan B, they're just not gluing any of us in on. But it's one thing to say, hey, we couldn't see this coming. It happened in the middle of our season or it happened right before the season opened. When it's, oh, we've been dealing with this for months and we still don't exactly know what we're going to do. I, I don't know how that's an acceptable answer for the NFL. So I, I believe that fans will be livid if the NFL gets hit by a, a 19 outbreak, which is viable, probable to happen. And suddenly, you know, there's no plan B for it. Also, what are we going to do when this very real scenario comes in where you wake up one morning and you find out that your favorite team's quarterback somehow managed to test positive for COVID, God forbid, and now all of a sudden he's missing the next 14 days. I mean, that's just, I don't, I don't know how many teams are going to be prepared for that reality. That's exactly what I was just going to bring up. So do you think it's fair to continue with the league if, say, just say Zeke gets it, five linemen have it, Dak gets it, you lose a cornerback. Is it fair to continue the league if that's possible? Or do you just say, look, next man up, I don't know what to tell you. we got to get a product out on the field. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to – I mean, it depends on the numbers. Like, if you're talking to a handful of players on each team – Maybe they can figure it out, but the practice squad is probably going to have to be increased, I would think, and then they're going to have to have some way to get people in last second, and that's not easy to do. I mean, in this in this mindset of, you know, the God forbids, if, if six or seven players test positive on a Saturday night before the game, how do you replace six or seven players suddenly? I mean, I, there isn't a good answer for that. So it's only going to have to affect one or two games with, with the big-name teams at the highest possible level before the Jerry Jones of the world will come in and say, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not willing to compete against these teams if we don't all have the same situations. And they're just, they just, there's just aren't enough football, but there's not a minor league. They can just turn around and sign from. So there isn't a good answer for them. Mm. Jason Fitz, first take your take. All right. Uh, reports are coming out. 60 games in 70 days for MLB. The season starting July 19th or the 20th. The players will have their full prorated salary and expanded playoffs this year and next year, and they have waived any potential of grievance. So, Jason Fitz, does that sound like we will have a deal? Yeah, they've waived potential grievance. Heck yeah. I mean, and they're getting all their money. I mean, kudos to the players. Basically, the owners 
uh, are taking all the they're taking all the losses, which is you know at the end of the day, if you're a player, you only got a few years to play. If you're an owner, you want to own that team for you know for decades. You want to stay in your family forever. So it matters. It means more to them. So yeah, I think uh, kudos to the players for getting what they wanted on it. If that's the way it plays out, and if the owners are saying they're willing to do that, I can't imagine what else the players could possibly want. Owners are taking a path on it. So. You know, good for them, and and heck yeah! I mean, now now let's see if fans are willing to to come back and watch it in droves. We shall see. We'll hope so. Good stuff on the state of sports, Jason Fitz. Uh, first, uh, first take your take. ESPN Radio at Jason Fitz, and he joins us weekly. And hopefully, very soon, we'll be previewing games and reacting to them with Jason here on the Sports Pass. You the man, pal. Man, I appreciate y'all. I'm not even gonna know how to do that when we do it. We're gonna have to get that. We're gonna have to get that workout back in. Appreciate you guys. Stay safe. Yeah, man. Jason Fitz, like all guests, appeared via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. You know, yeah, we're gonna have to like basically figure out like what the rules are again, and like get back into that whole mode of like reacting to a game. 